founding father of African literature in English. Winner of countless honors and awards, author of dozens of acclaimed essays and books. He wrote his first novel, Things Fall Apart, at the age of 26. It sold over three million copies. Which is widely regarded as a masterpiece. You've talked about the corruption of democracy. To... The hero in his homeland of Nigeria. You are my brothers and sisters. The value and the importance of books and life and libraries. Distinguished novelist, poet, and critic, Chinea Achebe. Eleven honorary degrees from universities around the world and awards galore, including the Commonwealth Poetry Prize. Achebe became a spokesman for his people and an enemy of the ruling military. Every African school child basically grew up with Chinua Achebe. When Nigeria is working, we will all know. It's no point asking me. Every Nigerian knows what is what needs to be done. And so there must be things that are universal in the human story. The way the world is, is, um, is uh, organized is inadequate. On Nigeria's 50th independence anniversary, he, he was frustrated but also at the same time optimistic. One of the most successful African authors of all time. Sahara TV had the rare privilege of meeting the iconic man of letters on several occasions, one of them being an exclusive invitation to his upstate New York residence to celebrate the 50th anniversary of his best-seller novel, Things Fall Apart. Okonkwo kills a messenger from the British District Office in a final attempt to defend his Igbo culture and impress upon the people the need to fight back against European colonialism. This wins him no support whatsoever. Okonkwo unable to defend his culture alone and unable to accept the change, hangs himself. The use of traditional Igbo proverbs are frequent throughout the book. We went to upstate New York at his home on his invitation to chat with him. <laughs> The story wanted to be told at all costs, and, uh, and uh, why it, it chose me to tell uh, the story, um, I don't know. That man was one of the strongest men in the world. You drove him to kill himself. Now he will be buried like a dog and men will shut up! He further explains the meaning of colonialization, according to his view. What uh, colonization did to us uh, was to remove power from the elders and pass it over to children. This is what European education meant. Uh, for maybe, I don't know what, what other place had this experience uh, of having children because they went to school, giving them power over the elders to determine what was going to be what. Omoyale Shawori spoke of the 50th anniversary reading one of Achebe's book at a separate commemoration in New York City, deciding to read from Girls at War. Who still believe that he's a chauvinist, that he's not. I would have uh, chosen to read Things Fall Apart today, a chapter or a paragraph from it, but uh, in speaking to him, he said that Things Fall Apart is being celebrated in about 50 countries around the world this year. And if everybody picks a chapter, they would have read the entire book, mm -hmm. and he wants it to be sold. So we are no longer <laughs> reading Things Fall Apart. <laughs> so I decided that I'll read another book of his. That's Girls at War. In the year 1919, I was a young clerk in the Niger Company at Tomorrow. To be a clerk in those days is like to be a minister today. 
My salary was two pounds ten. You may laugh, but two pounds ten in those days is like fifty pounds today. You can buy a big goat with four shillings. I could remember the most senior African in the company was one Saru man on 10 13 4. He was like governor general in our eyes. Like all progressive young men, I joined the African club. We played tennis and billiards. Every year, we played a tournament with the European club. But I was less concerned with that. What I liked was the Saturday night dances. Women were surplus. Professor Achebe talked about his relationships with publishers and also his hopes of translating some of his work. You would think that the relation between the uh, writer of that story and those who published it would be very close. Unfortunately, um, we live in a world of um, accountants. So I expect that in the end there will be many translations uh, the following year, Sahara TV caught up with the later Chebe in conversation about the state of the country, Nigeria. I have yes. this uh, simple yes. proposal yes. the young people whose term has come to straighten up our nation. They must get together across the ethnic groups, across the educational uh, classes, and put Nigeria on the on the road. To salvation. I call it salvation, but it's so important. We have to save ourselves, save our people, especially the poor people who have got nothing. Nothing. So some of us have, especially those who went to school, have got at least a little bit of something. But there are people in this country of ours who have nothing that they can say, this is what independence gave me to. And uh, it's not right. It's not right. Sadly, on 21st March 2013, Professor Achebe, who had been wheelchair-bound for over 20 years following a road traffic accident, succumbed to a brief but undisclosed illness at a hospital in Boston. He was laid to rest during a private burial at his rural hometown of Ogidi in Anambra State. Tributary messages came from all walks of life, one of them being an earlier recorded birthday wish from fellow humanitarian and icon Nelson Mandela. This was played during the first year of Professor Achebe's anniversary at Bard College. There is comradeship in books. There was a writer named Chinua Achebe in whose company the prison walls fell down. He was a fellow African from the west of our shared continent. He wrote out of an experience of a traditional African childhood, an Igbo among the end hills of the savannah, out of emergence into adulthood under the prejudices of colonial rule, a realization of the action and responsibilities that are the price of freedom. One of the organizers of the event at Bard College was one of his sons, Dr. Chidi Achebe, who had this to say. I'd like to thank everyone that showed up, um, especially uh, given the fact that we uh, rescheduled this, of, um, this uh, evening's lecture. I think this is amazing, what a crowd, thank you very much.
I'm going to be I'm going to be very quick because we have to be respectful of His Excellency's time. He needs to be at Madiba's funeral. We all want him to get there safely and in uh, good health. We want to thank His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama, who we believe in uh, the words of my dad is one of the great hopes of Africa. There was entertainment from the popular dance group Sankofa. <laughs> President Mahama of Ghana was the honorary guest. Like many other African men, I had paid a tremendous amount of lip service to the strength, resilience, and beauty of the African woman, that mythical mother who expertly raises her children and adeptly runs her household and ages into the mystical grandmother who talks in aphorisms and tells quick one Nancy folk tales by the firelight. Suddenly now, I saw a vulnerability that I never knew existed before. I saw the gross inequalities, financial and otherwise, and I made a silent promise to that young girl whose words had opened my eyes that I would use whatever influence I could as a politician, as a husband, as a father, as an ordinary citizen, to ensure that other girl children are able to live their lives without an ever-present fear of sexual abuse. His widow, Dr. Christy Achebe, also paid tribute to her late husband. It is perhaps appropriate to begin the talk about my late husband, Professor Chinua Lumogu Achebe, and this inaugural Africa Leadership Forum lecture named for him by referencing a passage from his most recent book, There Was a Country, in which he ponders the true meaning of African leadership and democracy. He opens what he sees as a threat to the modern African state and talks about the example of Madiba, an exemplar of true leadership. Close friends, colleagues, and family gathered at Andrew Mellon Auditorium on June 2, 2013, under a banner of Life of a Purpose, a celebration of life and legacy of Chinua Achebe, where a short stage adaptation of the book, Things Fall Apart, was staged. of Umofia talked and laughed about the locusts, about their women, and about some effeminate men who had refused to come with them. The sun rose slowly to the center of the sky, and the dry, sandy footway began to throw up the heat that lay buried in it. Some birds chirped in the forest around. The men trod dry leaves on the sand. All else was silent. His longtime friend and schoolmate Chike Moma was there to speak of his dear friend. Chinua was a charmingly modest man, a great conversationalist, humble and soft-spoken. I do not remember ever hearing him raise his voice stridently, even in anger, in all the years of our association, from high school through college and through the many years of our young manhood until our different career paths separated us by long distances. I know I must have angered and needled him from time to time, especially when I teased him about what seemed to some of us to be his relative aversion 
from most forms of physical endeavor. The man could not have done, in track and field, he could not have done the 100 yards meter, meters in 20 seconds if his life depended on it. <laughs> Astonishingly, however, Chinua was a graceful ballroom dancer. I know I did one other thing better than Chinua. I was a better singer. Poetry from old friends. The Iroko tree that stood at the entrance of the orature and literature homesteads has fallen. The mighty Mugumo tree that was at the center of the creative ceremonial grove is no more. At first, unstoppable rivers of tears flood our lives, threatening us with drowning. The words of a Kiswahili proverb flood our minds. Mutmuku ukianguka, ndege huangaika. When a mighty tree falls, the birds wander aimlessly. There was a special song from a special choir of former students of Government College, Omohi. We lift our voice to thee, O Lord, to thee we sing with one accord to grant us Thy Son adore the will to shine as one. Others lauded the Titan. When I remember Chinua Achebe, three things come to mind, humility, laughter, and family. Achebe was a soft-spoken, plain-spoken, unassuming, humble family man, a very humble man indeed. His critique of Joseph Conrad's The Heart of Darkness, which was an iconic book in all the high schools and colleges and when I was going to high school and college uh, in America. And the journal that I helped found and edited for many years was the Massachusetts Review. And he published that essay in the Massachusetts Review, 1986. And that changed, I mean, in addition to the transformation and the creation of modern, the modern African novel, and modern African literature, and its worldwide impact on all colonial literatures, uh, previous colonial literatures, that essay also was a transformative thing. Oyim Chinua, once upon a time we walked together in the red dirt of Insuka, in Ogidi, in Lisbon and in USA, so many places, so many times, we walk together as the boy in Chinua. We walk together, Ibo and Jew, talking of Aka and Arachuku, you and me and Mary Lou. We walked together and Cola Nut was broken. Renowned poet, author, and playwright Sonia Sanchez was there too. From a history of Christianity and Igbo tradition, you crossed cities with hands quiet, stood tall as lightning, heard the proponents of death, trumpeteers called colonialists, and your eyes, tongue, hands, breath caught fire at the university, and you swam upstream away from the graveyards to your own birth, and sewed yourself on waters into the sleeves of change, became a mountain, not a mound, or a hill, finally a mountain, raining veins of silver and gold, finally a mountain, with rivers of prayer, finally a mountain repelling ice water ghosts, kneeling on razor-thin knees at confession. In an exclusive interview, popular best-selling author Chimamanda Adichie took time to pay a personal tribute. I didn't know him well, mm -hmm. but I, when, when I heard that he'd passed away, I felt just deeply heartbroken. I still do. It's still very hard for me to talk about him in the, in the past tense because there are certain people you don't want to die. Right. You know, this sounds very silly, but it's true. So I've always wanted Chino Achebe to be there, just there. I didn't want to see him, I just wanted him to be there because his presence, there was something about it that for me was, was nurturing, was, was important to my work and I think for my generation. Just that Chino Achebe is so important, Chino Achebe is iconic. 
and um, yeah, I just I, I think I think the world lost a great great human being. We will leave you with a special poem, simply entitled "I Tip My Heart to You." I tip my heart to you, father of African literature, even when suffering still knocks on my door and brings its own stool. I lower my head to the floor in shameful grief when your people are still played for a fool. I tip my heart to you, I tip my heart to you, giant of African literature, even when everything we learn from experience is nothing from it. My cocoa bent, drenched to their necks, where was the preparation kit, you ask? I tip my heart to you, even when the bombs blast cannon, ripping, blowing, mangling, mayhem, confusion, as the terror campaign assumes. I tip my heart to you, even when they put democracy on hold, within the 11th year, retrieved it and resumed the dirty practice. We have to learn to rule ourselves again, your advice. I tip my heart to you, as we wink, release of the freed spirit. There was a country, a diaphragm experience, painting a torrid vision on the mind, leaving bitter history behind. A man who does not know where the rain began to beat him cannot say where he dried his body. Who are you to be so ungodly? I tip my heart to you, towering man of letters, who freed our minds from the mental fetters, purging us of the colonial chains, that bound enslaved our brains. I tip my heart to you, noble patriot from Ogidi, dissector of Obi Onkonko's psyche, protector of society's moral key. You once sang, when old people speak, it is not because of the sweetness of words in our mouth, it is because we see something which you do not see. I tip my heart to you, as you talked about huts, not castles, as you balked about arrows, not swords, Yours was not about the denim and the jeans, but loin cloths. I tip my heart to you as things continue to fall apart, further piercing our heart when the North attacks the South, the South mocks the North, God's creation, Allah's children. Where is the harmony, brethren? A man who makes trouble for himself is also making trouble for others. I tip my heart to you, icon of literature, wisdom-braced preacher, Nigeria is what it is because the leaders are not what they should be. The lights are on, the eyes are open, wide, but they refuse to see. You pound the drums and kick the dust, invoking the spirits as you swallowed your tongue in language. Your pen was mightier than the gun. Volleys of jargon rich in African proverbs. We felt your threats and suffered your headaches of truths. Antidotes of colonial master smiths. I tip my heart to you when you played your proverbial melodies. A child cannot pay for its mother's milk, trying to reciprocate maternal love and care with a piece of silk. Until the rotten tooth is pulled out, the mouth must chew with caution, paying in mind to ration the portion. We salivated, savored, swallowed, and digested, contaminated, played, afflicted, infested, self-introspection, self-awareness, self, self, self. I tip my heart to you as you stand before your gods. I tip my heart to you as the curtain drops. You rise, you bow, you applaud, you acknowledge. You showed up, you showed down. If hiding truth lies in the books, your vault is pursed with beauty, knowledge, wisdom, and history. Rest in power, Chinua Chebe.